Welcome to Team Perry's Step Out of Line podcast, featuring co-hosts Perry and Lori Finkelstein. Together, they explore, meet, and share inspirational stories with guests who have made a positive impact in today's world. This podcast resonates with our hope to make this world a better place one step at a time through love, acceptance, and uplifting conversations. Honestly, I feel like my entire career has been a step out of line uh, for me. People don't believe it, um, but playing the piano does not come easy to me. I'm not a natural born musician. Um, it, everything I do, I have to work really hard at. And, um, you know, that, and that, that exposes insecurities and, you know, imposter syndrome and how am I getting a success? And there's a million people more talented than me. And it's, you know, so I've struggled with all those things for the last 20 years of my life and, Honestly, it hasn't gone away um, since I was 18 years old. In my first job, I got um, my wife put me on a list to audition for a band, and they needed a. Their main qualification was they needed a B3, which is an organ. They needed an organ player. I'd never played an organ in my life, but somehow I always had this mentality of, I always say yes, I can do that. Even now to Kelly, she's like, "Can you do such and such?" I'm like, "Of course I can," and then I go and stress and research and figure it out so anyway that audition uh you know this was back in the early 90s i i had a friend that happened to play organ and i booked a flight on southwest to austin texas and spent the weekend learning how to play the organ as best as i could and I've, every job has been like that whether it's video editing or uh being a music director um you know when when randy jackson hired me to um work for american idol the first time i'd never been a music director before in my life and i you know so everything, so that's a long story to say that everything I approach to me is outside of the line as far as my comfort zone, but I feel like that's how you stretch and grow. And, um, and I'm still doing that now. Like we're literally working on some music right now this week for our upcoming launch. That is so outside my comfort zone. I'm on YouTube. I'm researching, I'm, you know, watching 14 year olds teach me how to play certain parts and things. So yeah, so that that's a long answer to yeah, my, my entire career feels like that. And I'm very happy with it. I I love being stretched. It just I thrive under that somehow. And so uh anytime anything's getting too comfortable, easy for me, I feel like okay, something's coming around the corner. I'm just I'm always staying in a stretching learning mode. You're describing yourself, you're describing Perry as well, because she has the same personality. She decided to do podcast and I was like, well, what are you going to do? She goes, well, I'll teach myself how to edit. I think you also need sometimes to know how to reach out for help. And I, I carry that philosophy because now, now I'm in a leadership position. So I'm the person that hires all of our musicians. And I'm always attracted to, you know, at this point with Kelly Clarkson's success and, you know, the resources we have, I could literally hire the top of the top which would be the easy thing. I'm always attracted to, you know, like you, like you interviewed Glenn, this was Glenn's first tour. I'm always attracted to the guy that, or the gal that's going to, you know, it's stretching them just a little bit. And I know they're going to work hard. And 80% of the time that works out really well. Of course, there's the times when, you know, you're putting people in a position that they're just not quite ready for yet, right. but that's pretty rare. But I, I love, um, I'm super proud of you. Good on you, Perry, for, you know, right. learning and stretching. And that, and that just, that's going to continue the rest of your life 18 you went on your first audition what led up to that i had one little band in high school you know that i think it's one of those bands where you rehearsed for two years and you did one show <laughs> high school talent show that was the extent of my band and i you know i grew up in a small town in texas and i never dreamed i could actually make a living playing music as a matter of fact i was told my whole life you you can't make a living playing music so um i got married young uh, I've, I've known my wife since kindergarten basically we started dating in high school Aww. and we just we had a dream to yeah <laughs> <laughs> so we had a dream to you know we wanted to be involved in music and never believed that I could actually play in music but I just wanted to be close to it so my wife went to school to become an artist manager and I went to school to become a marketing publicist so my you know I thought well if I can't be a rock star be a musician then I want to be close to it and so I want to help you know launch them on so I uh, went to Belmont University in Nashville, and um, I got an internship at a label doing publicity. And my wife got an internship with a management company. And one of the artists that she was working for, they were the ones looking for an audition, uh, you know, looking for a keyboard player. And so she put me on that audition list and told me about it after the fact. And it was a 
um, you know, I grew up on country music and this was a R and B rap band. And I was like, are you crazy? I, I don't know how to do this. And she's like, Nope, I think it'll be great for it. So I, I think I, you know, I practiced every, every night for three months, you know, six, eight hours a day. Um, I ended up getting, getting the job and that's, you know, that's, that's what started. But yeah, there was no band. I, I actually sold my keyboards when I moved to Nashville because we needed money and I never thought I would actually be playing music for a living. So I, I'd given up that dream of that and I was pursuing business and um, my wife got me this audition and I, uh, I got the job and my first time playing with a band on stage was in front of 20,000 people because I've never played other than my high school talent show. Um, okay. So it was a really quick learning curve and it was the most, I mean, I was literally there like, like a fan, like you would be at a, at a show. I, I was waking up in the morning, taking pictures of the lights and of the sound. And, you know, I was just mesmerized by it all. And I still, I still am that way. I, I love everything about music. I love everything about our industry. I love touring. I love live shows. And so um, to me, I'm just a super fan getting to be a part of it. I just, I, I think I'm probably the luckiest musician I know of. That's such a great story that your wife pushed you. Uh, has she pushed herself like that also in her career? Yep, she has. And she's managing three clients right now and managing a pretty big project that's in the works and super proud of her. And, you know, we we had to make a choice. It it was really hard. I mean, it's not a lot of marriages survive touring. Well, let me put it this way. A lot of marriages don't survive just being apart for long periods of time. And right. when you're on, on the road, um, you're, you know, early on in my career, I was gone 100 days a year. Um, by the time I joined Kelly, there's years, I think during the All Ever Wanted and the Stronger Era, um, I was gone from home 320 days. So 40 days with my wife and 300 days. It's hard to maintain that. Right. So, so we made a conscious decision. A, we were going to homeschool our children so they could travel on the road with us. My wife took on that huge responsibility and they traveled the world with us. And, oh, um, wow. and that's really thanks to Kelly. Um, Cause when Kelly asked me to stay with her full time, I'd already been touring for 10 years. And at that time, you know, families it wasn't cool to have your family out on the road you know you, there wasn't enough it was a financial thing it wasn't enough money to bring out everybody's wives or girlfriends or children on the road and um and that was just really difficult for us and so we decided that wasn't for us you know I'd, I'd already toured for 10 years and I'm like oh that was great but now I'm going to transition into production I, I just can't maintain this and when Kelly asked me to stay I just told her, well, um, our family rule right now is I can't go more than three weeks without seeing my wife and kids. And she was like, absolutely, bring them out anywhere. Um, so they literally traveled the world with us for the last 15 years. They're grown now. My son's uh, 27 and getting his PhD in Wisconsin and my daughter's 23 and um, they're killing it. Yeah. So um, and that's really thanks. To, I, I, there's, there's no way I would have toured with another artist. It's, I can't express to you how rare it is to be able to have your family's on the road with you. I mean, imagine working at Bank of America and having your wife and kids with you at the desk every day. It's just right. not common. Um, and, but that's um, that's how important family is to Kelly. It's um, it's really, really fortunate. After being quarantined with my family for all these months, I could not imagine going anywhere. I, it's like, I need a break. Like, just go <laughs> somewhere, anywhere. But, you know, <laughs> right? <laughs> um, yeah. but per Perry and I, I mean, I'm her primary caregiver. So we kind of spend every day together every minute, which you know, can get on your nerves because she's the marketing director for Team Perry. So she's really my boss. And, yep. you know, I like to say, you know, did you do this? Did you do that? And she's like, I got this. You do your thing and I'll do my thing. And for me, yep. that, that's very hard to realize that my kid is smarter than I am um, yep. and that she's much more capable at doing a lot of what she does than, than I would ever be. So to yep. me, that, that's like the hardest thing to realize that, you know, kids grow up and then they're better than you are. Which on one hand is kind of what we want. You know, we want our kids right. to end up, you know, better and smarter than we are. That's, that's the goal. What's your favorite thing about your, yeah. your position that you will have? I mean, it's the obvious answer. I just, I love playing music. Um, but my favorite thing about my job is just the diversity of it. I mean, I, I literally wake up every morning not knowing what my day is going to bring. There's a text from Kelly or a call from Kelly. And there's, there's, there's not a time in my career with her we haven't been working on some project or music and, you know, I lose track of it because by the time you guys find out about something that we're doing, it's a year later. You know, right, yeah. the stuff the stuff we're working on right now, you won't see till you know later this year. Um, and it's just nonstop. It's every day. It's challenging. It's invigorating. Um, right now, I I never never had any dreams or thought I'd be on TV every day. And so, working on the Kelly Clarkson show, 
it's uh, again a whole new learning curve everything i thought i knew about music and production everything is different in television world so it's i feel like i'm literally starting over but i um you know i'm two years into it and probably every other day that i drive on the universal studios lot i'll take a detour and go drive past the back to the future set or the Free Migo set and like I I love being on a on a movie lot. It's it's uh it's magic, it's invigorating. And so I'm again, I'm a super fan. So uh I, I pinch myself every day when I drive through the gate and get to be a part of Hollywood magic. It's it's a pretty awesome. Grueling though, the the workload is like nothing I've ever experienced. You know, on tour, you um most of your day is free and empty, and we're on stage for what an hour and a half a day, and that's it. Uh television is a whole different thing. It's, you know, 14, 16 hour days, seven days a week. Um, it's really hard work, but it's really rewarding. You get such a sense of what a warm and caring person she is. And it definitely yeah. crosses over, which is why I think the show yeah. is just gonna, you know, survive and succeed no matter what happens, because yeah. she seems very genuine. Um, yeah. And then off camera, you know, she, she curses at herself. She makes mistakes. She laughs at herself. And, you know, not everybody could do that. And we, we just, you know, we love watching. We're very big fans. So it, it's yeah. kind of cool. You're, you're yeah. like royalty here. You're a, a songwriter also. Yep. So do you have time when you have such a grueling day with so many hours to get back to that creative side of you as well? No. And it's been really hard, especially since we launched the TV show. Um, you know, I, I used to have songwriting sessions all the time and was, um, writing for other artists and had songs and albums. And that has just really slowed down in the last, you know, four years. Uh, I think the last, the last big song I wrote with Kelly was Catch My Breath. I can't remember how long ago that's been now. That was on her greatest hits album. Um, but I am excited. I have co-written some new things with her that I'm really excited about. So, um, you know, um, we have a studio here at the, at the office. So really, hundred percent of my creativity right now goes to Kelly. I, you know, I really don't have time for much outside. Um, right. my, my only outside outlet I have right now. And I, I think it's really important to have some sort of creativity outside your normal job. Um, and so I'm really happy. I've been doing some dates with Colby Calais, who's one of my favorite artists. And it's such a different style than what I'm doing with Kelly. I'm going out and doing some weekend dates in between our show. And that, that to me, it's not even, it's not about money. That's just a creative outlet for me. It's just nice to be able to go, do what I do, you know, in a different environment. You mentioned that your son's going for his PhD and your daughter is 23. Do they have any creativity like you and your wife do? Yeah, my son's totally a scientist. I mean, he's he's a great musician, but his passion is science, computer science and meteorology. Uh, my daughter is an incredible singer, songwriter uh, mm -hmm. and artist. Um, she's been writing the last four years for film and television. And she's had, she, she does better than me in writing. She's had... Um, something like 30 TV placements in the last few years. And wow. we've gotten to co-write co a few things together, but she's had two Netflix series and uh, songs released overseas for TV projects and video games. And so she's killing it creatively. And it's such a different style than what I do. Um, it, it's pretty awesome. She's, she's inspiring. Well, we have to tell you, we see the product of, of your work with you with your boss and and we love it obviously music touches your heart music really has, <laughs> right it has brought the world together yeah. especially over yeah. the past year and a half and to have somebody consistently do that daily knowing that you have somebody to turn to and yeah. that person's in your house and it's like very comforting no matter what chaos and craziness is going on you feel it i think that was really such a valuable thing i love doing it i don't take it for granted it's still emotional for me every single time we do it and i love I love, um, I can't believe that after two seasons, you know, we've already covered almost 400 songs already. And you would think at some point Kelly could just phone it in and just, cause you know, she's got a great voice and she could just right. show up and sing the song. Her ability to be in the moment and still turn it into an emotional performance, whether it's, you know, sad or happy or, you know, it's, um, it, it's just amazing to me. I'm in awe of it. And then um, some of our most magical performances are, are whenever, you know, I present one way because I grew up in the 80s. And so like, you know, if we're going to do a song. I want to I'm a huge pop head. So I'm like, let's do full band and get all the great sounds. And and she might connect to a lyric and say, you know what, let's just do this. Just me and you on the piano. And I'm like, oh, here we go again. And then <laughs> you sit down and, and then you sit down and play it and the give and take of the emotion with that. And then all of a sudden, because I don't usually dive into lyrics. That's obviously her strength. And right. then 
to be there live in the moment, connecting with that, like it's it's hard a few times not to just ball, you know, on TV while you're performing because right. it's and it's uh, and it's so weird to have that emotion as a part of your job, you know. Um, so anyway, I I love it and I do get a sense of the joy it brings to people only because it does that in our lives, you know, in my my own family. Did you first see her when she auditioned that first audition with American Idol years ago? No, I actually didn't watch the show. I had no. I was on tour at time um, with Nick Carter from Backstreet Boys and. We were, I, I just didn't watch, I still don't watch a lot of TV, so I hadn't watched it. And I had um, just gotten an offer to play with another band and I called my, and, and the same day Randy Jackson called me and he said, hey, I've, we're wrapping up this TV show, American Idol, and I have these artists, Justin and Kelly, and I want you to uh, put a band together and go out and do all the promo with them. And I said, oh, I'm so sorry, I just took another job. And I called my wife and told her about it. And she's like, you need to call him back. I've been watching, like my wife had watched from episode right. one and had voted for Kelly and like, I literally never even heard of it. And um, listened to my wife, made the call back to Randy. And three weeks later, I was with Kelly in New York City at Bryant Park. And it was her and Justin performing Timeless um, from the Justin and Kelly movie. Um, which movie. I still have, which I still, <laughs> I haven't seen it yet out of respect for Kelly. So I promised her I'd never watch it. Uh, yeah. So, and then that, that started the whole thing. So, uh, it's no, I had weird. no, I had no idea what to expect from her. And even at the time, even that first show, it just, you know, I, it was a, we were doing Miss Independence and I'm like, Oh, that's a great pop song. And I had no idea her depth. Um, and ironically at the first, we were rehearsing in New York at SIR and, um, we rehearsed Miss Independent and she was walking out the door and she turned around and she's like, Hey, by any chance do you, have you heard of Amy Grant? And I grew up listening to Amy Grant. Oh like, yeah. She was like, Oh, she has a song called my grown up Christmas wish. I'm about to do on a Christmas album or a Christmas special. Uh, help me pick out a key. Her voice on that was just incredible. And, I'm, and I thought, okay, wow, this, this artist is the real deal. And um, that's kind of whenever I knew that I had, I was a part of something special. I'm glad, you, I'm glad you called them back. Yeah, yeah me too. Been, that would have been a bad turn of events if you didn't step yeah. out of line in that sense. <laughs> yeah. You owe your I wife can't. a lot more than you give her credit oh, wow. for. Yeah. You might no, have I give her all the credit. 